All right, so this is my 80 GMC Sierra Classic K25 trailering special. And we're gonna be installing a B&W turnover ball today. Never done this before. But uh, this is the model 1400R. Fits Chevrolet and GMC trucks, 1973 to 1987, half, three quarter and one ton trucks. So done a little bit of the work already. I actually was kind of stressing out about cutting this four inch hole, but it actually went pretty good. Just follow the directions and measure where you're supposed to measure and mark it and then uh, get yourself a four inch hole saw. And that portion of this was pretty straightforward. The second step in the instructions is to remove box bolts. Now, if you have one of these pickups like I do, and this thing's in actually in pretty good shape, but these bolts are extremely rusty and there are eight of them. Two, four in the front and four in the back here. And even soaking them down with some pretty good penetrating fluid, they wanted to turn up top. So I just took my wire welder tacked them onto the bed so that I could get them off easy. The directions will have you loosen the passenger side while removing uh, the nuts on the driver's side. So just keep that in mind. All right, so now when we're underneath there, you can actually kind of see what's going on. Uh, one of the bolts is right here. Hard to see with this light, but so one of the bolts is right here. The other one's right here. And that's on the driver's side. I've got those completely off. And then on the passenger side, you can see I've just loosened them. Actually, this one came all the way off, but no big deal. So um, I figured tack welding them on up top would be a little bit easier, and that way I won't have to try fishing them through the holes and all that BS. So this might be a little bit easier. The back bolts and nuts are pretty challenging. I got a two inch receiver tube on the back that somebody put like lock nuts on or something and it is a real bitch to get off. So I actually broke two of those trying to get it off. So not exactly sure what I'm gonna do back there yet, but so these are pretty easy to get to. The others uh, towards the back of the vehicle, I had to drop the spare tire out, you can see, uh, to gain access to up here, but uh, I'll try and get another snapshot. So you can see on the back side of the vehicle now, this is a little bit more challenging. I've got a, a nut up there that I really can't even get off. I don't know if I'm gonna take the torch after it or exactly what I'm gonna do yet. But, and you can see right here's the one that actually broke off. And then on the passenger side, I've got this one loose. And that one kind of half-assed loose. Um, really difficult to get in there. Like I said, I've got this two inch receiver tube that somebody put on here and I think they put different hardware on and it just, between rust and I think those are actually lock nuts. They do not want to come off. So we'll give it another whirl here. The next step is going to be to uh, lift the driver's side of the bed and slide the gooseneck uh, hitch into position in between the box rails there, uh, right, right underneath the hole. So, so in the instructions here, it actually tells you that you're going to want to have an overhead lifting device to basically set your ball and then somehow clamp onto that and use it to pull up through the hole from, from the top side of the bed here. Now, I'm gonna try and get by with just laying a two by six across the top of the bed and maybe using a come along or something. Uh, I don't have a real fancy A-frame and my cherry picker is not gonna be long enough to actually reach that. So I'm gonna try it this way. All right, so you can see that I, this gave me just enough lift here to, by jacking up on these running boards that I really don't like. Gave me enough room here to get the, should be enough room anyway to get that assembly underneath in between the frame rails. So while I don't even have uh, the rear box bolt out, uh, this should give me enough clearance here to slip that in. So we'll get All right, so after what I thought was gonna be a pretty fierce battle, it actually wasn't that bad. And uh, I got this all slipped in underneath the frame rails here. It's kind of hard to see, but you know, I had to negotiate this dual exhaust. Um, 
Turns out I had to take the bolts off of the passenger side as well just to get enough clearance to slip um, this on top of the frame rails on the passenger side. This particular model doesn't have the pieces that come down along the side of the frame rails. It just lays right on top and then you run bolts down. So um, maybe a little bit easier, I don't know. But uh, wrestled with this a little bit here and after about five minutes I got it in. Had to jack up the, the jack here a little bit more to get enough clearance. But uh, ultimately wound up getting it in here. It's lined up pretty decent. Looks like everything's gonna fit. Looks like I got enough clearance for everything here. Um, you know, it should be pretty straightforward. I think I'm going to attach my come along now and lift that thing into position so that it's flush with the hole I cut up top and uh, see about making sure that it's straight and then I'll lower the box down and wind up drilling the holes through the plate and the frame. Uh, there's four 9 16th bolts, um, two for each side that secure this to the frame. They go through the bed, the, the hitch, and ultimately through the frame, and then you just bolt the whole thing together. So I guess that'll be the next phase of this. So, so this is how everything looks from the top now. And in a bizarre twist of fate, uh, it turns out at an auction sale years ago, I got this in a box of junk. And it is for a B&W turnover ball. And it will actually... I don't know what the hell it's for, but it will actually fit in there perfectly and allow me to uh, give me a good spot to attach a chain to to lift this into position. So I'm going to do that next. All right, so you can see that I actually ultimately elected to use a ratchet strap and it worked absolutely perfectly. So got this thing uh, coming out of the hole there. Looks like it's just a perfect fit. Obviously I'll need to align some things down underneath, but uh, everything looks good so far. So I think at this point I'm probably going to lower, you know, kind of go down make sure that I've got that thing exactly square uh, in relationship to, you know, this way on the box. And then uh, lower the box back down and probably start drilling my holes. So actually upon further inspection here, there is a, try and point it out here without losing my light. There is a piece of channel that runs along the back side here, and I, I guess that's why they have you drill the hole exactly at, I think it's 49 and a half inches, because it centers it right on this piece of channel, and that way you don't have to worry about it being square. I don't know, but it definitely worked out well for my situation. Um, I don't have to square anything up. I should be able to just use this factory piece of channel and uh, I can pretty much just go ahead and set my box back down now and drill my holes and fasten everything up. So I'm going to do that now. Alright, so you can see that I've pulled my lifting apparatus away from here and I've now measured to drill where my fasteners are going to go. And it comes with uh, all the hardware that you need here along with your uh, safety chain U-bolts. So we'll do that last. But right now we're going to focus on attaching this thing to the frame rails. So what it has you do is it has you find the center points of your two inch or two inch uh, the turnover ball assembly here and uh, measure 15 and three quarter inches out, and then three inches above and three inches below on both sides. So you can see I've marked all of that out here and I'm going to put my holes into these four spots. And I'll drop my hardware down. It just so happened, and again I don't know if this is, this probably isn't a coincidence, but I don't know in the directions it said if you wind up with these marks on the top of the corrugation, obviously you have to put spacers in or shims, which could be a real bitch because I don't, I don't even know how you would do that. You'd have to lift everything off again. That would be a real pain in the ass. Evidently, I either lucked out or something here. Uh, maybe I just did something right, I don't know. But this is definitely a lot simpler. So I'm gonna go ahead and just double check and make sure that I actually am on the frame rails in those locations from underneath. And I'm gonna drill my quarter inch pilot holes, double check and make sure I am actually on the frame one more time because I'm gonna be going through 
the bed, the hitch, and then the frame. So it's gonna be, I mean, you're gonna want a good set of drill bits for this. I bought a brand new set just for this in anticipation of this. So uh, I guess I will see how it goes. All right, so I came underneath here to just verify after drilling one pilot hole in the driver's side rear. And I really don't like what I see. Well, I don't know how well you can see this, but you can see where the pilot hole came out and I'm way to the rear of the bracket and I'm too close to the frame rail itself. Now, I, I can't necessarily move uh, any further towards the center of the pickup because I won't be in that lower portion of the corrugated channel anymore. So I can live with that, but what I can't live with is knowing that I'm just on the rear of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go actually a full inch uh, closer to the front of the pickup and I'm gonna get my light here so I can point this out. But what I'm gonna wind up doing, and this just will not cooperate. Well anyway, what I'm gonna wind up doing is I'm gonna bring that hole up closer to the front of the pickup by an entire inch uh, for both of these. I assume they're, they're both off. So um, that'll get me into the beefier part of that steel there, as you can see. So that's the one change I'm gonna make from this uh, instructions. I guess just one other quick note here too. Um, like I said, I went out and bought a brand new set of drill bits to do this job. Now I've never used cobalt bits before, but I bought this set from Tractor Supply. I think it cost 30 bucks. Um, never even heard of this brand before. No clue if it's good or not, um, but I'll tell you what, it sure made this, uh, cause you're drilling through like, I don't know, probably half an inch of material here, um, minimum. So, I mean, you want a good quality drill bit or this is just gonna be a miserable job if you're like me uh, you probably got your drill bits from your grandpa laying around here and uh, they aren't exactly the sharpest, so. Okay, so after some adjustment, and I don't know exactly why this happened, it was probably my bad um, with the measuring, but you can, you can see now that I'm on the thickest part of the steel with the second hole there to the right, and then uh, actually my original mark was good enough on the, the forward one to the left. On the other side of the frame, it just worked out quite a bit better. Um, not sure why again, but uh, you know, you can, it's kind of hard to see. But you can see that this worked out much better over here. Again, not sure why, but I guess the point to this is just make damn sure that you measure twice uh, when you're doing this. So and validate. Come down here and check. I've been down here four times already, so you can just take a look at the thickness of that material that you're drilling through. I mean, these are, take your time, come down, look, measure, and do it right. So I went ahead and drilled the 916 holes. Actually went through pretty good. Uh, this here is one of these titanium bits that it's kind of a, actually a cheapie that I got. And I gotta tell you, um, on the last hole that I was drilling over here, I don't know if I got a little crooked or what the deal was, but um, you can see when I turn it on, that bit bent pretty significantly and bound up. I don't know why, but uh, so I gotta tell you though, I am impressed with those cobalt bits. So um, I'll be definitely getting more of those. So now I'm ready to go underneath and put my rest of my hardware on here and torque everything down. They got you torquing this down to 90 foot pounds. So that should be the final step in this. And then of course, uh, just a little finish work around here. Um, I don't know, maybe just kind of pretty that up a little bit. So, all right, so everything's torqued to spec from underneath. Uh, it actually wasn't that bad. The holes were probably a little bit closer to the actual uprights of the frame rails than I would have liked. Um, I could really only get my torque wrench on one of them, but uh, I just kind of counted the threads, I guess, and um, gave her the old uh, eyeball on the rest of the torques, but uh, should be where I need to be. 
So the next phase of this is to do the eye hooks for the safety chains and there's all sorts of measurements and stuff in the instructions on how to get these holes in here but based on the lack of success I had I guess with um, drilling the holes uh, for the for the mounting hardware based on center point of this hitch and everything I I'm going to take a different stance on this which I think will be more See, underneath the pickup there's plenty of room underneath there above the rear differential and underneath the hitch where I can plainly see these holes so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a pilot hole again using my my uh, quarter inch drill bit and uh, poke these holes in from the bottom up and uh, then use the 9 16th up top to ream them out and do it that way I think that'll be a lot easier than goofing around with measuring because like I said didn't do so hot with the mounting hardware so I'm gonna go ahead and do so this. I've gone ahead and drilled the holes from the bottom up as you can see and I don't know I guess in the directions so here again they said that these were supposed to lie inside the bottom of the corrugation my mounting hardware did but you know these aren't going to they're gonna kind of be on the side so I don't know if I got off center here just a tad or what the deal is um, in any event it's not gonna bother me on this old pickup of mine so um, just kind of something to watch for I guess if you're gonna be real fussy about this maybe uh, make sure that you have this all pre-measured out and maybe shift to one side or the other I, I don't know exactly how this would get fixed but I'm gonna go ahead and drill the 9 16 holes then for uh, dropping these down and uh, you can see they've got springs that go on the bottom side to keep them compressed uh, downward when not in use and then I'll go ahead and fasten the, the nuts on. Alright so I got the holes drilled and I, I think I said 9 16 but it's actually a half inch bit but you know being on this slope portion of the corrugation here and having to match up to that hole underneath I mean it's it's no problem to get my hardware in there but the thing you got to remember is that bit kind of cut a little bit goofy here and some pretty sharp burrs on here and you will be running your fingers along here to hook up your chains and stuff so I'm just going to take my my air um, rasp and go ahead and smooth that out a little bit before I complete the installation so you might want to explore that in your installation as well. Alright so that is it for the install you can see that these are spring loaded they, they retract um, you know should probably be in this channel here I don't know what went wrong like I said got a little bit of finishing to do around the hole here I think I'll run a bead of silicone or something around there just so uh, you know water or whatever doesn't get on the top of there and create some issues they uh, recommend that you grease your ball before you put it in so what I elected to do was just take some white lithium grease Put a good coating on the inside there you can see and then i'll actually put some on this ball here too before i drop her in might be a little overboard but why not and then actually i want to make sure that we get inside those holes there too so you can see there's some in there so just get it in there and then they Say that you're supposed to work the mechanism a little bit here so let's come over to the driver's side where the, the handle is and I don't have my light over here but in here now well, let's get the light so you can see the handle all you do is to the left to the right to disengage it and then to, and to uh, release it, this one's kind of stiff. I don't know what the deal is, probably because it's new and the paint hasn't worn down yet. But you just pull it out and then move it to the left, and it, and it hooks. And then you can you can uh, come back up here, and your ball is free. And they want you to do all eight positions. And then you know, of course, the benefit of a turnover ball is for the storage just turn it over and it's flat so hope this video helped um, one of the things I guess I will show you is you know this like I said this particular model does not have the 
anything coming down on the sides of the bed or on the on the sides of the frame rails here um, it's all just riding right on top of the bed rails and there's just the four bolts that hold this thing down so um, I'll show you actually over here on my Dodge this is a 2010 Ram 2500 and on this model the hitch is a little bit different I mean you can see the the, the it functions exactly the same um, and on this model those tow hook uh, the safety chain hooks actually did wind up being on the lower part of the corrugation too this this install I actually had professionally done but uh, and, and you can tell I mean they know what they're doing but underneath here you can see that on this particular model on the Dodge it's got you know these these parts here that come down along the side of the frame rails and then it attaches like that and then another thing I really like about this is the handle to release the, the pin is right here so I mean it's easy to grab you can see it right there um, engages and disengages pretty easily and on the, the one on the GMC um, you know just just for a quick comparison here I don't necessarily care for the fact that it's so far in there you know I mean I don't know I guess we'll see after I use it a couple of times I'm not gonna tow all the time with this pickup it's just gonna be kind of for around the yard and for haying but um, I guess we'll see what happens so leave some comments in the in the comments below if you have any questions otherwise uh, have a good day and good luck with your install.